What's up guys, my name is Omar and today's topic is the criminalization of mental illness. So are we really criminalizing mental illness? The short answer, absolutely. Because as it stands today, the largest provider of mental health treatment are correctional facilities and jails. And to be more specific, there's roughly 10 times more people receiving mental health care treatment in jails and prisons than there are in actual mental health facilities. And that's ridiculous. But how did this happen? Well, in the 1950s, there began to be a widespread shutdown of long-term psychiatric hospitals in America. This was called the institutionalization. The idea behind it was to get away from locking people away in mental asylums and really trying to integrate people back into society as much as possible. And this was done partly because of the new development of psychiatric medications that were actually shown to help with symptoms. And the thought behind it was that they were gonna close down these psychiatric hospitals, these long-term care facilities, but also open up community-based centers in place of those facilities. The problem was that after the vast majority of those psychiatric hospitals closed down, they weren't replaced with a sufficient amount of community-based mental health care facilities. And also, of those facilities that were built, many of them were not equipped to handle patients with severe mental illness. So how did mental illness get criminalized then? Well, the lack of treatment facilities and the lack of beds helped create a space for this. Because there are many people that suffer from untreated serious mental illness due to the lack of healthcare facilities in their vicinity. And oftentimes when a patient with mental illness goes untreated, those symptoms can manifest as behaviors that mimic criminal behavior. On top of that, the law does not allow for involuntary commitment of people unless they're a threat to themselves or a threat to other people. And I get that. Patients' rights are extremely important. But what ends up happening is that you end up with a lot of people who don't have access to quality health care because these facilities are closing and won't have access to adequate health care unless they're exhibiting self-harm behavior or criminal behavior. And when those symptoms appear, who's being called? the police. And really, police have kind of become the first responders, in a sense, when it comes to acute mental illness crisis. And sometimes when people are met by police, they're taken to a mental health care facility, but oftentimes they're not. Whether it be because of the lack of available beds or the officer not being able to recognize that it's an actual mental health crisis that's going on. Many people that need care actually end up in the criminal justice system instead of being placed in the public health system. Now, this is extremely problematic for many reasons. Because first, we're essentially punishing people who have mental illness because we fail to provide the services that they actually need. Secondly, prisons and jails are not adequately equipped to treat people with serious mental illness. In fact, a 2014 study by the Treatment Advocacy Center uh, revealed that people that are mentally ill and are arrested and actually brought into jails and brought into prisons, they're actually at higher risk for abuse, higher risk for rape, higher risk for assault. They are at higher risk to have their mental health condition deteriorate because of the actual environment that is not suitable for treating that specific mental illness. Criminalizing mental illness is not only inhumane, it's really expensive also. Many people with serious mental illness are what they would call frequent flyers, meaning that they're going through the revolving door of uh, the prisoner jail system all the time. And caring for a prisoner that's mentally ill can sometimes cost twice as much as it would for another prisoner, sometimes even more than twice as much. It really doesn't make sense. It makes a lot of dollars for some private prisons, but it really doesn't make sense because it's really more beneficial to the state and to the patient if we poured more resources into adequate mental health care facilities. Those facilities can provide care for people that desperately need them, and the criminal justice system won't be burdened with an issue that they're not fully equipped to handle. But what have we seen lately? Funding for community-based facilities is being slashed. Back in 2012, uh, Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, he actually closed down half of the free mental health care clinics in Chicago. Since then, um, Cook County Jail in Chicago has become America's largest provider of mental health treatment. America's largest provider of mental health treatment. With 30% of inmates suffering from mental illness. 30%. It's happening right in front of our faces all over the country. It's not just Chicago. 
And really it's happening because of the stigma around mental health and illness. That stigma makes us refuse to talk about it. And that in turn tells lawmakers and policymakers that we really don't care about it, which can equate to less funding for some of these facilities. You know, we only start to care when it's a homeless person in front of our local business. Or we only really start to care when it's a mentally ill patient who's a victim of a police shooting. We're very reactive when it comes to mental health and illness instead of being proactive. So let's get ahead of it. Let's talk about it. Let's advocate for it. And let's have the courage to stop denying it. Because being mentally ill should not be treated like a crime. It should be treated like an illness. Because it is. That's all I got. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, keep the conversation going. If there's anything you want to talk about in the comment box regarding um, mental illness and the criminalization of mental illness, if you got anything to add, if there's something I missed, please put it in the comment box. This is something that we need to talk about. This is something that we need to keep the conversation going about because it's really important. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're watching this on YouTube too. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys. Later.